Right, hello, and uh, welcome to something that I'm doing as a bit of an experiment. Now, I'm going to call this the Druid's Dozen. Now, um, those of you that know me, and probably most of you that don't, my name's John Wisby. I'm a uh, bit of a rock DJ. Uh, I do a couple of shows on uh, radio. There's the Sunday Rock Show on BCFM Radio, 93.2 FM in the Bristol, UK area. And then there's the uh, the Rock Druid on AstroRadio.Earth, which is an international music and science-based station. Now, um, I've been DJing for many, many years, and uh, I've built up a fair record collection, records, CDs, shed loads of MP3s. So what I thought I'd do, I'll select a dozen at random, just say a few short words about each, and... Uh, you know, see if people agree with me or not. It's a free world. You're more than welcome to take opposite standpoints and uh, debate what I'm kind of giving a quick hello to in the comments, uh, as long as you're polite. OK, we're going to kick off with this one. He says these are all grabbed at random. And uh, some of these are ancient, some of these are modern, some of these are CDs, some of these are vinyl. So uh, we'll start with this one. Yeah, uh, if I can get it in the shot. There we go. Southern Stars by Rose Tattoo. Um, originally recorded in uh, about 1984 in Australia. If you don't know Rose Tattoo, great Australian sort of like heavy blues boogie band. A bit like kind of ACDC with slide guitars. Um, still going strong. Uh, so this album came out in 1984 in Australia, although didn't see a European release until about 1990. And uh, I've got to be honest, I love Rose Tattoo, and this is probably my favourite Rose Tattoo album. Uh, let's have a look on it. You've got uh, the Pirate Song, the Classics uh, uh, title cut, um, the Anthelmic Freedom's Flame, uh, the fantastic headbanger, the radio said Rock and Roll is Dead. Yeah, um, if you're not into, if you're not heard much Rose Tattoo, this is the album I recommend that you start with. Okay, moving on, let's have a CD next. And uh, I think you see this one. Get it in shot. There we go. Now, this is an album called uh, The Killing Fields, and it's by a band out of Birmingham called Zombie Extras. These guys are very metal. Um, really don't know how hard to to describe their style it's, it's just contemporary uk metal probably the best way of putting it this is their debut album from 2007 um <coughs> there is a uh, another album after this a title which i can't remember they've done a couple of vps as well i don't know whether the band is still going but uh well, i acquired this one when it when it came out Got to admit, it's a bit of a favourite of mine. You've got some cracking tunes on here. Uh, the best ones are probably the uh, Invisible God and uh, the title track. Yeah, so um, maybe I ought to pick up this one. It was a self-release job that hasn't even got a barcode on the back. So, uh, But if you can track it down somewhere, I highly recommend that you do. Okay, back to the vinyl. And we'll have this one. Yeah, if I can get this in shot again, where are we? Yeah, Psyche 21 by Loud. Now, if you don't know... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, got a bit of a chesty cough. No, it's not COVID. Right, um, yeah, Loud. A band, a spin-off band from the New Model Army. Uh, formed by original uh, New Model Army uh, member Stuart Morrow, the bass player. Um, yeah, kind of interesting, kind of, sort of like pseudo goth kind of uh, rock kind of thing. There are shades of NMA on, on this album and on their previous one, Degeneration, which was a pretty good album as well. But this is one I grabbed. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, so it's got, it's got a bit of a goth vibe to it. It's got a bit of a kind of almost like cyber rock vein in places. And this is just a great album all the way through. Not a weak track on it. Um, they did have a minor hit single off this, a cut called Easy. And as a little aside, I've been a band called Strange Institution. 
and the day that Easy made the charts, we supported this lot at the fleece in Bristol. Really nice bunch of guys. We had a bit of a party with them afterwards. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, tracks like Chemistry, Absolution, A Strange Encounter, the aforementioned Easy, and uh, their other single off this, uh, Mary She Made Me. Absolutely great album. Again, might be a bit hard to find these days, but uh, if you can do, do so. Oh, we're going to, let's have another CD. He said, grabbing one at random. Oh, yeah. The Disciples of Zoldan. Blackened Theological Tome. Now, this one, um, again, I can't remember exactly how long ago I got this. Uh, sent to me by the disciple of Zoldan himself. Basically, it's black metal, very black metal. This is a New Zealand project. They had a string of albums out. And, um, you know, um, I tried to get my hands on a couple of the other albums more recently because I had this one on CD, the others on MP3. Uh, lost them in a computer crash and have been trying ever since to recover them. But anyway, um, this is just, it's very heavy, very intense. Now, I know black metal's not for everyone, but uh, if you like your kind of, uh, let's have a think, Behemoth, those kind of bands, you'll love this one. Um, yeah, got great song titles as well, as a lot of these type of projects do. He breaks his feet upon the feasts of falsehood. Uh, primeval battle against the elastic rule. Uh, sages have written of your kingdom in the wake of chariots. Yeah, it's yeah, very heavy, very intense, but it keeps its tongue firmly in cheek. So, uh, yeah, recommend it. Now, unfortunately, I wish I could play you some snips off these, but, you know, Facebook algorithms and all that can't do it. So, just press straight on. Next up, we have this. Now, my, I oh know I dragged this one out of the racks at random. My initial comment was, oh dear. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Quo. Um, when I was a little teenage headbanger, Quo were the first band I got into um, heavily, you know. Uh, and I still do love a lot of their stuff, especially the early stuff. Albums like Dog of Two Heads, Mark Ellis, Greasy Spoon, um, those first well, three or four uh, Vertigo albums. However... You know, I've got to be honest with you, as much as I love Quo, I really don't like this album. Not that much, at least. To me, compared with a lot of their earlier stuff, and even some of the ones that came after it, it's a bit flabby. It's a bit Quo by numbers. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's almost as if they're kind of fishing for hit singles. Although there was only, if I remember rightly, one single off this, the title cut. Which again is a great song, but I prefer the John Fogerty original. Um, there's, looking at the track listings, there's one song on here that I really like, Too Far Gone. Um, there's Hold Your Back, there's Dirty Water. It's all stuff that they used to play live, but mm, I don't know. It's uh, almost as if they had given up trying, or there again, if the stories of the band's. Uh, illegal powder kind of um, consumption around this period it was this case I was just banging it out so they could get the money to go down to go down the dealers but anyway um, I apologize when you quote fans out there if you love it more power to your collective boogie elbows but to me not really okay next up we'll have this now this is a little mini EP and if uh, mini album EP kind of thing a band called The Effect now this lot were out of Swansea and the Nethley, that area of West Wales came across them when my current band Alien Stashed in uh, we, we, we play a fair number of gigs over that part of West Wales and uh, we first came across these guys when they supported us back in about 2011 the, uh, the band's called The Effect and this is the Everything Has Gone EP only young lads when this was recorded they got about a collective age of about nine not collective but an average age of about 18 19 but they're really nice kids and i've got to admit they did uh, the first song they played with us they blew us off stage 
mainly because we were mid-tour and we had been at an all-night party the night before, so we were a little bit hungover, but hey, yeah, that's rock and roll for you. But anyway, um, yeah, there's some great tracks. It's kind of, that's how I describe it, it's a bit Biffy Cairo, it's a little bit pop-punk in places. It's just very enjoyable, and uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to these. I know they did a follow-up EP a couple of years later, but... What happened to them after that, I really don't know. I'll have to check out and see if they're around. Or if you're seeing this video, guys, hit me up and tell me what you're doing these days. But yeah, again, might be a difficult one to get your hands on if you're interested in checking it out, but worth the effort. Back to the vinyl. Okay, now this up, we got a bit of Uriah Heap. Band that I like. And again, I've got to admit, not my favourite Uriah Heap album, but it's not a bad one. This is uh, 1985's uh, Equinox, Equator, sorry, Equinox, what am I about? Yeah, Equator. Um, one of the kind of more commercially sounding Uriah Heap albums, although Uriah Heap always have had a bit of a commercial edge to them. Um, pretty good. The tracks on here are worth listening out for. Poor Little Rich Girl, Rockerama, uh, Lost One Love, um, Heartache, Wolf of the Night. Yeah, it's... Not a classic by any means, but uh, well worth a uh, listen if you want to that way inclined. And um, if you're in the heap, well worth adding to your collection if it's not there already. Back to the CDs. Oh yeah, now this is probably going to show up too well on camera. But this is an album, uh, eponymous debut album by a uh, Italian band called Having Thin Moonshine. Now, this lot, um, this is the only album they released, as far as I'm aware, although there were a couple of EPs out, and a vinyl EP as well. Now, this lot, they're from, uh, I think it's Venice, you know, uh, in, in Italy, and um, they're kind of a bit, kind of folk goth. Um, the, uh, let's have a look, I'm trying to think who, who it was. Uh, yeah, there's a girl called Ali. Never did find out her full name. It was a fantastic kind of uh, vocalist in the, um, oh, what you call her? You know, Susie and the Banshees type, um, Susie Sue, that's right, yeah, uh, kind of vein. Band themselves, again, they're kind of very kind of, I was like Euro, Euro folk, but in a very dark gothic vein. Um, yeah, there's a number of great tracks on here. My favourite one is Skeleton in a Red Phone Box. But, uh, let's see, Giblets of Sorrow is a great one. Um, yeah, The Kidding, uh, Little Progress. Yep. Yeah. Um, got released by a new model. Uh, hang on, what was the label it was on? He says having got Arc Records over there in Italy. Um, I don't know if the label's still going. I don't know if the band is still going. But if you like your goth, well worth checking out. Back to the vinyl. <coughs> yeah. Now, this is a bit of a rare one. Um, so you've got a bit of cover damage up there. i um, got to admit, I'm one of these people. I'm a record collector. I don't really collect for value in that. I collect for the music rather than for kind of uh, keeping everything in pristine condition a lot of the stuff's not in pristine condition when i get it so uh, but as long as the records play and i can hear the tunes that's the important part now this lot um this is a cracking album very very obscure but uh well worth kind of having a uh, a hunt for although i've not found i've been meaning to replace this on uh, vinyl or mp3 but not been able to get it I'm not going to get rid of the album obviously but just to save it because it's beginning to wear out a bit. Anyway, um, this lot. Now, Band of Joy, uh, Midlands, sort of like rockers, uh, sort of came out around about the same time as bands like Zeppelin back in the late 60s. And I think there is a Zeppelin connection there somewhere with like various, someone from Zeppelin played in Band of Joy. I don't know. I'm not a huge Zepp fan, so uh, that part of my musical history is lacking. But, um, 
Yeah, they were going for ages and ages and ages. So it was called Band of Joy. Uh, come the 1980s, they had a completely different lineup, and uh, they kind of um, shortened the name to Joy. And they recorded less, as far as I'm aware, the only thing they ever issued. Now, um, to say this is a great album is an understatement. This is one of the most brilliant obscurities you'll ever come across, if you can ever find a copy. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of borders on sort of like post-space rock in places. Stuff like people like Steve Swindles were doing on their solo material, you know, the whole Hawkwind Keys play. Um, tracks like Submarine City, uh, We Ain't Down Yet, I Am A Plastic Bag, uh, What Did You Expect, uh, This Is My New Heaven. Um, there is not a weak track on this album. It is just absolutely brain melting. And uh, why this album never became huge why this band's kind of remained kind of relatively unknowns i do not know um maybe the fact it was on thunderbolt records who were uh, one of those kind of labels that formed released a few albums including something by samson and uh, vanished rapidly under bankruptcy or whatever it was but anyway one for the collectors out there and lovers of obscure music hunt down a copy buy a copy love a copy you will love yourselves for the effort Okay, back to the CDs. Oh, yeah, now, this was one. Um, when I first started on BCFM, uh, back in about oh, 2006, I think it was, uh, I just kind of um, banged out a load of speculative emails to a load of bands I found on MySpace at the time, saying, Oi, can you send me some MP3s or some CDs or something? Because I, um, I didn't want to do the old classic rock show that I'd done on previous kind of... Um, uh, sort of radio dabblings I'd done in. I wanted to get into doing some, uh, yeah, play some classics, but also kind of look at the, what was coming through, support the underground. And this band, Antique Scream, sent me their, their album. Again, as far as I'm aware, it's the only thing they ever recorded. I don't even know where they're from, other than some part of the States. Yeah, American band, maybe West Coast, maybe East Coast, maybe North Coast. Have they got a North Coast? No, they haven't. But you know what I mean? Um, information lost in the history of time. But this is a great album. Very much classic rock. If you're into bands, uh, kind of, uh, mm, I don't say Atomic Rooster kind of got a vibe running through this. Uh, it's a little bit stoner maybe as well. Um, just, it's just good. Um, tracks to look out for if you can get hold of a copy. Include, uh, the Dinosaur Arms, Queen Bee, and Sink the Sun. But to be honest with you, they're all pretty damn good as well. So, um, yeah, Antique Scream, Sink the Sun. Again, a lot, a lot of this stuff obscure. May take a bit of time hunting down, but go get. We'll have another CD. Yeah, another CD, I think. Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, now this is something a fairly recent more added to my collection. This is Cybernetic Witch Cult's uh, Spacious Creatius. Now, Cybernetic Witch Cult, they're a band out of Cornwall down there in the English West Country. Um, <coughs> very stoner, very doom, very, very good. Now, with my current band, Alien Stashed In, we've uh, encountered a Cybernetic Witch Cult several occasions, uh, ending up on the same bill as them normally with us in support because they're brilliant and we're well we're just aiding stashed in but anyway um cybernetic witch cult absolutely amazing band especially live um they have these massive great big back projectors and there's kind of if you've ever seen the classic hawkwind live you know what i mean with all the kind of visuals and there's lights and there's smoke and but imagine that but without dave brock a bunch of doom metalers um yeah, uh, okay, I've got a couple of albums out. I have both, but this is the one that I grabbed for today's purposes. And, um, oh, God, brilliant album. Um, this has got my favourite Cybernetic Witch Cult track on there, Dark Star, which is uh, 
you know, anything that's based around one of my favourite kind of black sci-fi comedy movies has got to be worth a look. And, um, yeah, uh, let's have a look on here. What else have you got on there? There's uh, uh, Velocirapture, which is, uh, oh, there's all good stuff. The Enchantress, uh, High Wizard, King of the Horsehead Nebula. Yeah, very spacey, very doom, very dark, very heavy, very trippy, very stoner. Um, those of you that do perform in uh, illegal herbicide, or maybe not illegal in your area, combustibles, good one to, to listen to whilst you're doing your illegal activities. Not that I condone such things, of course. Anyway, um, yeah, Cybernetic Witch Cult, check them out. And uh, I know they were planning a tour that was put on hold during the lockdown period. But, you know, when the tour's rescheduled, if you're in the UK, go see them. You will not regret. And leads us on to a final one. And it's a compilation. Yeah, now this is a uh, fairly obscure one as far as us Brits are concerned. Meridian, the Brief Encounter mini five-song EP. Now, um, this was an American and Canadian uh, release. Um... I've still got the import sticker on there where I got it. I used to be a massive Meridian fan back in the fish era. Went off them a bit after Hogarth joined, but uh, yeah, massive Mer uh, fish era Meridian fan. And um, <coughs> when they went over to the States around about the time of the release of the Misplaced Childhood album, um, this came out as a kind of uh, pre Misplaced Childhood release thing, I think. It contains uh, Kaylee, the single version we got a couple of um of the u.s single lady nina which was a b-side in britain um freaks which was the b-side to i want to say lavender maybe wrong and a couple of live cuts um uh where were they from uh yeah uh called it hammersmith odeon and as far as i'm aware not released elsewhere the car cuts being a brilliant version of fugazi and uh, script for a jester's tear itself so um yeah it's it's an interesting one i mean lady nina's not my favorite meridian track and neither is freaks neither is katie to be uh, to be be honest but i'm honest with you a mate of mine had already imported a copy of this and i really like the lot of two live versions on side two so uh hence the reason i tracked down my own copy but it's yeah but it's not bad and um i suppose if you're into meridian and you're a complete you're a completionist well worth adding to your collection yeah uh, would i recommend it for collectors yes um but if you can uh, find digital copies of those two live tracks off this then i could probably forego the a side okay so that's it for this one hope you liked if you did leave a comment and uh, if you want to disagree or agree with me or give me your own experiences of any of the stuff i've waved in front of my little camera then uh, do so i apologize this isn't edited this isn't um kind of uh, done anything any slick production way one i haven't got any of the kind of flash cameras or editing software to do that with and two i quite like the lo-fi diy punk approach so anyway if you like it let me know i might do another one in a week or so if not yeah we'll just leave this as an experiment that went so keep safe keep socially distanced and uh yeah love yous bye <laughs>